Disclaimer, this podcast was released on Spotify on June of 2021. If you haven't uh, listened to it yet, please do give it a listen there if you prefer. But it shall be released now on here for all of you to listen to. Uh, this was um, done before the mention of the Daleks uh, started filming. So, yeah, if you want to just enjoy me and Dan rambling on about anything and everything for an hour and a bit, enjoy. So, welcome back to the Super Circuit Podcast. Uh, my name is Aiden or Type um, on, U- on YouTube, uh, Instagram, wherever. And today I'm going to be talking to Daniel J. Passion, you'll know him as either the Irish Doctor on the Fraction Timeline, or from his own channel, you know, or obviously his own um, movies he's made, um, uh, original stuff. Well, I think I'll let himself introduce himself. <laughs> uh, thanks, Ian. Uh, so as I said, uh, uh, you probably know me as the Irish Doctor, or most less likely than my own original stuff. I... <laughs> there we go. That's all right. Here it's good to be here. I like I I'll be honest. Um, like I re- like your horror film you did last year. I really enjoyed that one. I was a uh, very you know, <laughs> I was a bit tense when it was on. Like, <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> I was just like I was like you know when um what was it when Anya closed the fridge and you know she's thinking oh something's there, and then all of a sudden something comes. I like Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like that. Uh, I I I knew people like. There's people are think there's going to something behind that fridge, so I subvert the expectation by having nothing behind the fridge, but just behind her anyway. Um, speaking of that film, I did recently put it into a film festival. Unfortunately, it didn't go for you, but, uh, but who's, uh, it's, it's their loss. <laughs> exactly, because yeah, like it was a, like from my perspective, I thought you really you did you know great with horror, and I think like obviously with the second episode of Fractured Timeline, though. Like I, I like your how you you know how you tackle horror movies like any kind of that kind of genre. It's very interesting, you know. Yeah, yeah. A horror for me has always been a sort of a fickle thing because there's so many things with horror and with uh, conjoined. Um, I, I, I say, I, I say, uh, when I submit to, to a film festival, it's like in a conjoined was a was more was more practiced with uh, horror as a genre and uh, a lot more practice because I haven't made any films since lockdown happened and i and there's this uh horror film festival that was coming up and i and if i i put that in i put it into a few more film festivals so it was really uh, a good excuse just to me to dust off the old uh filmmaking skills and to put my degree to some of you hey definitely do that man i mean look when there's an opportunity there go for it yeah. i i def i mean if <laughs> Since you mentioned lockdown, I guess we'll kind of uh, go on to that part of how has it been for you over the last year since this whole thing started? Uh, lockdown has the first lockdown was by far the worst for me personally it's because um, I, I think the first lockdown we all agree is the one we took the most serious because you know it was a pandemic. People, it, it was uh, we just didn't know what what the effects of COVID we still don't mean I, I don't know I, I was, but we it's just like and my me and my fiance who's Anya we haven't seen each other for the first two months of that lockdown it was the most time we've ever spent apart and it was a trying time for I won't say it was a trying time for our relationship but it was like we, we missed being with each other and and it was a trying time on my mental health as well uh because um I do suffer with anxiety and depression and it was a wasn't a good time for me personally that first lockdown the second lockdown wasn't as bad because um we figured out sort of how to work around it with me and me and Anya being together she just stay with me and um with this lockdown now it it, I, I, it just it, i think this lockdown has been the longest but to be honest it hasn't felt the longest you know what i mean oh yeah no completely i mean i think well don't I'll I'll just give my two cents like quickly like down here it's we've had it since we had this whole thing since Christmas so literally on the cusp of I think right after St Stephen's Day we were straight into lockdown it down here I don't know if it was the same up you know up up uh, there for you but uh, uh yeah. we, 
fifth lockdown and Boxing Day. Oh, all right. So we were we were on in at the same time. So yeah, yeah I, I think this one, I think it has technically been the longest. Like, but we've all adapted better to it, and there's been you know some leniency somewhere. So thankfully, we've been able to see some family members and you know do at least a few a few things. I mean, I def I can imagine like obviously, on you being your fiance, it's you know you two are, you. You two would want to be closer together, and you know this whole thing. Yeah. That it, I mean, for a lot of people, they definitely threw any plans under the rug, which is definitely a not a, not a great thing. But obviously, you now you you know you've walked around this, and fair play to you. I'll just say that. You know? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's um we have been careful during this lockdown. We made sure that uh, well, these last two lockdowns, we made sure that myself and Anya that. Who we well, when we were we were together in the lockdowns, made sure that the the circle of people we were with were enclosed to just those people, just to make sure that we were not, you know, because like I, I still currently live you know, the, live as, 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 as I, I, I still live with my my parents because uh, lockdown is also not giving the best opportunity to move out again. So it's I, I'm, I'm they could spread it and. Um, Anya also lives with her parents. Uh, they could also they can also catch and spread it. And some of my family members are also very at risk to the virus. So it was that that first lockdown was very scary because you know there was people in our lives who were in genuine threat of it. Oh yeah, I know I can relate. Like I I've had grandparents you know who are friends who have like if I have a friend who has parents you know who would be very much at risk to the virus. So I think. It's definitely something I can relate to, and I, I like. Thankfully, like I hope everything's been okay so far for you guys, and there's yeah. been no, there's been you know, no, no huge risks, you know. Everything's fine now. Like everyone who's at risk has now been vaccinated, and myself and Anya are the only two members of uh, of of our circle or who have not been vaccinated. So it's kind of a weird turn of events now. We're the most at risk people. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it's it, it's kind of strange, like because I think all the young the younger generation are just there, like where where when are we getting it? When is it? When's our vaccination coming through? But it's, yeah. they're it's, talking about opening up clubs, and it's like, okay, are you, are you going to vaccinate us before you open up those clubs? Yeah, I mean, like, where, when are we going? Is this is this just going to be all the uh, the over thirties or something or over forties? Yeah, uh, it'd be uh-huh. great. It'd be great for the eighties nights, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. But um. I, on a lighter note, uh, obviously I'll you know try and keep yeah you know, we we try and keep it light here. Um, I'll fine. ask you I'll ask you this: how how did you get kind of get started in like everything that you're doing now? You know, I like filmmaking and vi- oh. you know, visual effects, all that stuff. You know, I think like everyone, I, I I feel like everyone has the same story. I watched Doctor Who Confidential when it, I was when I first started watching Doctor Who, and I just saw everyone having a great time making films. I thought. I could try my hand at that, and here I am, um, in debt to a degree now, <laughs> <laughs> and that's um, that's basically how I got started. I wanted to make films, and I wanted to make Doctor Who fan films, and I asked around like some uh, I-, I call the big shots back then, who did the VFX in around the Doctor community, and me being the little guy at the time, me being that uh, that 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 you know the, he he's from Northern Ireland, so. <laughs> So me being Northern Ireland, just starting out, it's just like, nah, of course they didn't. They replied to me, so I got a trial version of After Effects, and I just tried my hand at it, and then I uh, I managed to resource After Effects in not the most legalist of ways afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and then I eventually did get... Uh, I, I do own it legally now, now, but back then, it's like I was—I was a bad boy. <laughs> yeah, look, uh, but, yeah, look I, I don't—I th- don't think you're really the only one, so don't don't worry. No, I don't think I was. I think everyone's had a lucrative past with Adobe. <laughs> oh, I'm—I'm—I'm I'm, I'm in debt to him right now, so you know, it's just how. <laughs> Same here. <sighs> but, Jesus. But um, I like—I I will definitely say you like. I, I'll admit this. I did. I, I actually did watch a lot of your earlier stuff. So back when you did, like you know, when you were kind of, I used to see some of your title sequences or the kind of 
small figure animation, stop motions. Uh, oh no, you 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 were there during that that point. <laughs> <laughs> I I was well. I I'll be honest. I, like you know, back then I watched a lot of um. You know, I I was watching Garlic Idea, Batman March, um, a lot of other you know figure you know start you know figure adventure creators, and you popped up, and I was just like. Oh, he sounds Irish. All right, this is. It. I feel yeah. great. I, I don't feel so alone now. <laughs> From the motherland, I. Uh, because you know, there's not for me back then. Like even back then, like there was not a lot of Doctor Who, like Irish Doctor Who fans, and it was online. So I was very to see somebody out there doing it and you know doing very well with it. I was like, maybe I can, maybe I can, you know, make a stab at it myself and try, you know, go on to all this filmmaking stuff. So. Yeah. Like I, I'll say this: the final end was the one I was, <laughs> I was very much interested in seeing the end too. <laughs> oh yeah, so was I. I think I, I, I think we need to get some context here. Um, the final end was a two-part bigger venture I was making. I was originally gonna make a two fifteen-minute parts, but then I realized whilst I was making part one, I was like, shit, this is thirty minutes, <laughs> <laughs> because I just put everything in word, like what scenes I wanted, and I was like, okay, I got this scene, and I got right this, I got because. I didn't really know what the structure was or how to scream right back then. So I wrote the scenes that I want to have in it. And I thought, okay, I've got 15 scenes here. That should equivalent to like 15 minutes. And like, oh no. <laughs> and that's not how it works. Um, I think the cool, coolest thing about that one is I, is I got Simon Fisher Becker to play an original character called the Oracle. Oh, did you? oh, right. Yeah, he, he did a lot. He did a lot of that uh, voice stuff back then, didn't he? Like, yeah, he did. I think he still does it uh, bits and pieces today. And um, I've since recycled that character into Fractured Timeline. Um, you may remember from the uh, prequel, there is a character called the Oracle. And oh, that, yeah. yeah. Um, he was played by what was it? Was that Connor? That was Connor. Uh, Connor, that was Connor. Oh, that, that, he did very well. I'll be honest, you know. Yeah, and. It had Luke actually and Luke Newman uh, giving his go at tenants. Oh, <laughs> which I think he's painful to this day. I've I've since taken that. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but no, like honestly, uh, you know, it's it's great that like you know a lot of the stuff from your figure stop motion days is kind of it's kind of blended into what you do now. You know, whether that be you know a bit of Doctor Who, but even your own film stuff like uh I mean, I'd ask you, what what would you say has been your favorite film to make? It can be recently. It could have been whenever you kind of uh, it. It's like fan film or like my short films. Uh... Um, we'll go short films. We'll go short, like you know, uh, because because uh, I, I, I fan films would be very difficult to mix that in. So thank you. Um, no problem. <laughs> have you seen a short film made called Bus Stop? I I did I. Like I do need to rewatch it though, but I remember you like it was very like that was the first time I went oh Jesus this is like <laughs> this is a very high quality hair Jesus like I might you know because I'd for a long time I'd only you know obviously seen you do like the yeah. Doctor Who kind of stuff and whatever so when I saw this I was like well <laughs> yeah um I'm proud of like all the other ones like the the, the uploaded series stuff that I do and. Um, but Bus Stop is the one that I feel most proud of because it was just a uh, nice simple two characters and it's about a, just this one person and what she's going through. And um, I showed that to my tutor who was a who does do film directing um, or does commercial directing. He, he does some sort of directing and he felt he loved the script and he wanted me to, he definitely wanted me to make it. And I made it for my final major project for college. And just I completed and spent uh, so much money on it. Probably, yeah. some, probably more money than I probably should have, but uh, I, I completed it and I was like, yeah, I'm super proud of this. And I, sub- I was about to submit it and then he told me like, oh, w- w- we dropped the module. We're, you're doing something else instead. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, I got a good film out of it and I'm very proud of it to this day. I do need to do a digital remaster of it because the audio quality isn't great. Oh, right. Yeah, I like I I won't like this is not I this is not criticism because I've been through this as well. Like I I noticed when I remember watching the original uh prequel to your Doctor Who series. Oh yeah, and the I'm just like because I remember the audio quality and just seeing it now compared to then, I was like, this is a jump up here. <laughs> yeah, like, I had to really try. Even then, I'm not proud of the re- the remaster. It it's it's just dubbing. Is dubbing's always going to be hard. It's like I. Yeah. 
my second year film um this year so i i get i i get it completely <laughs> yeah and that's before i complete my I, I do also have um i specialized in sound uh design uh in uni so if i were to do it now it would be so much better <laughs> but but unfortunately now it's back before i did sound design in uni but anyway i, I Going forward, sound design and sound quality much better. But as well as uh, um, the reason why the original wasn't so great was because when I was recording it, um, my I think I, I can't remember it was either my the headphone jack the another uh, microphone jack that I used for my camera at the time became faulty, or it was the microphone itself that broke. No, it was the microphone itself that broke because I remember like. When I filmed that last scene from the original where the doctor meets Nathan again, uh, that it's uh, that that I got a new microphone for that. So, ah, uh, right, right. But, but, the, but literally up to that scene, I had no real microphone. I was just it was all the internal microphone. Oh, right on the on the camera or on, on the camera, and it was a cheap Lumix, Lumix camera. Oh, oh, dude, I I I have like an old um, what's the one? They're not they're not like a not like a Canon or a Nikon kind of thing. It's like a very you know, one of the small ones people would take on holidays, digital. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it, it it was like a, an interchangeable DSLR, but it, but, uh, it was like, it could only do seven twenty p, and it didn't have it, it had horrible onboard audio. And I thought to myself, oh, I'll pass, I'll pass, and just making a small fan film. And I didn't realize it's like it got. I didn't realize it would get like thousands of views. <laughs> <laughs> like I remember, I remember the week you dropped this. Um, I was, I think it was around the same week everybody was reviewing the 11th Doctor. It was when, like, that figure of Matt Smith from Series 7. Oh, that, that one. That what figure. Was... It was around the same week people were starting to review it, like, Lord Saxon and everybody. And I remember it was the, I think it was, like, the Thursday or Friday that week. And I remember your fan film was coming out. I was like, I have to watch this. Somehow I have to get this up, like, because I only have my phone. And I was like, Please tell me I have enough credit to watch this. <laughs> uh-huh. uh, but it, like, look, even back then, I'd say it was like, I, you know, I always thought your, like, your stuff was very, like, you kind of, I'll say, you kind of, you kind of put a bit of inspiration in me to try with my own stuff. So, you know. Oh, thanks, thanks for that. Yeah. Like even the last scene, I'll, I'll be honest. Like when you went, um, the the last Kowabunga, when you kind of were in the Tardis and taking. Oh. I was like, like thinking about it now, like back from back then. I was like, whatever he does for his next regeneration is gonna fucking break me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. uh, we're going back up to that point because, um, uh, spoiler. That's basically, I be I will be recreating that as my actual regeneration. <laughs> oh my! Oh, but I, I don't. I probably won't try Calabunga like that again. <laughs> I think yeah. I think it would hurt your lungs, man. I mean, I'd, I'd be the same if I did it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but basically, I got uh, we're, we're, I'm making my way to the regeneration again, and that's uh, gonna be uh, like I'm, I'm not sure about the Nathan part, but basically, me dropping the hats, me going to the TARDIS. I, I, I I'm still something. Do, do I say the cow bunga? Do I do I scream at last cow bunga, or do I do, do I go gracefully into the night? <laughs> I think it's I think it's just like. I mean, obviously, I saw the behind the scenes of Father the Doctor and, you know, what Luke had to go through with that whole process of going, you know, regenerating. And I think, yeah, you know, I think it's the same with everybody. Like, it's it's not an easy process to go through or even to write. It's just something you have to, it's just, it's, it takes a long time to think about it, I guess. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I I remember hearing the story like, hey, what was it when like everybody was talking about that regeneration scene in that? I even what was it? He said like you were you were behind the camera just trying to hold it all together, and look, like some of them were crying and stuff. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was it was quite emotional because um, um, Luke um, Luke took a while to get into the sort of frame of mind of of it to film that scene, and. We sort of we left him alone in the Taurus for like a good ten minutes, listening to the track that he was going to use, and we just sort of like peeked in, and he was just he he had a, he had a bit of a cry, and we all just had to come and we had a nice big group hug, back when you could do group hugs. <laughs> oh, okay, um, hopefully we can do them again. <laughs> yeah, and then it's just a, 
and then like uh, and then like as we were filming there was this, the scene when Luke was like holding on to Meg and he sort of whispered to her please just please don't let me go and now uh, I was like okay give, give me a hug give me a hug you need a hug you need a hug <laughs> I don't know that's a good that's a good thing to do for a friend because honestly, I'm like in those type of scene like with that type of scene you really need to try like you know do like I know I like I've seen obviously Matt Smith David Tennant went like Peter Capaldi when any on the show like even then they find it hard like so I I can't imagine it would be for someone who's like played it longer I mean he played it for like. Five, five to six years or something, is it? Yeah, basically. Uh, but he, he was he just in five years. I right? five years because it was twenty eighteen or what's twenty seventeen? Oh, right. I can't remember what year did the film come out. Not twenty eighteen because I remember that uh, the twenty. I remember summer, summer twenty eighteen was the worst month for me, man. <laughs> oh <laughs> my! God. That's when I had to do all the VFX for the film. Oh, dude, I'll be honest. I watched your video the whole way through. You, I think you put out a video saying all the VFX for the Fallen Doctor. And I was like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> yeah. was, right away, sorry to swear on this, so you don't don't worry. But <laughs> but um, yeah, I watched like when I saw all the VFX all together in one video, disregarding any of the other scenes. I was like, "What?" Like that is a lot of effort. That's a lot of time and effort put into that one. Like for one gigantic projects such as that like yeah like fair play like it thanks and it was about 300 vfx shots in the end oh my god <laughs> and that's the most vfx shots i ever had to do and they only had uh the summer to do it because in the summer i that's all that time i had with my computer before i had to fly back off to uni and i could not have done half the vfx on my lap i couldn't have ha- done half of those vfx on my laptop so it was very much a time constraint thing at the end. Oh, I can I can imagine, and like I mean, I have my Mac here in front of me, and I think if I went anywhere else with my normal laptop, I think it would just crash just straight away. Yeah. <laughs> like, so no, fair, like fair play to you, like, and in, I mean, I'll bring it back to the short film in regards to like obviously Luke, you had him star in your film Overlooked with yeah. with Anya in it as well, and I was like, like. Oh yes, that that that's a very emotional piece. Like, I like obviously I don't you know I don't know everything about you know people who want to transition or or are trans you know obviously are transgender. But that that was you know when I when I saw that I was like you know yeah it, it made me understand things a lot better. Like you know because back you know back then I had not a lot of understanding about what people want to do. I know I know it was like. Oh, you know, someone, you know, like, you know, they were always a woman, so they were transitioning over. And I was, you know, I, I, I was trying to understand it. And, I, you know, kind of just help me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Understand. Um, with that film, it was uh, actually a, a part of a trilogy that uh, my, me, myself, and Con- me, my, me, Connor, and me were doing. Uh, uh, he did two films called Overlook and Finding Alex. I'm uh, sure I'll probably link to those after this. Uh, podcast to, to that video so you can watch those um and every time we do a spin on it on the in the first one uh which is overlook uh, with the first one was um i played uh a male version of alex which was inside the female version of alex's mind struggling with her uh, gender identity and uh connor played the character i played bertie oh. and in the second one uh, a, a friend of ours, uh, his, his name is uh, Pedro Michael George. Uh, he might, might might know him if you over to audios things. Yeah. Uh, and, and he was he's in Waterside, a, a series that Connor did. Uh, he played all the roles basically. He played he played uh, he played uh, a version a character called Stan. He played Alex and he played Bertie. He played all three of the characters because he's meant to be like inside his mind. So he's meant to be all these characters. And then it was the same actress who played the female version and then my version was a gender swap where it was a where it's a man for women you know what i mean and it's, just, it's lots it's lots it's very complicated but uh my version has been was basically a gender swap and um it was basically me uh, making the film but 
in a reverse sort of perspective. Yeah, and like I'll say, it's like fair play to both Luke and Anya and yourself and that you know because they they played it really well. You know, like the way when you know what was it when Anya's character is kind of in that uh, what would you call it mind space or something, and she's trying to figure out what's going on and you know and why it, you know it was is it is interesting because I'd never you know I just. I, I was, you know, I was interested to find out more. You know, I, I like to, you know, I like, you know, it made me want to know more and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, in terms of like the short film itself, it's just like I do feel like I made it when I was very uneducated about, uh, about the subject. I feel like if I made it now, I'd have a lot more knowledge about, about the subject and to how I would handle it, because. Although I don't feel like it, it touches on uh, anything that would be deemed too insensitive, I do feel like it comes from an un, a place where I just didn't have the knowledge to understand it. Okay. But I feel like for what it was, it worked. But I feel like it could have been better. It could have represented it better. All right. Uh, look, I mean, there's all, I, there's always time for improvement or you know changing up things or whatever. It's Oh, absolutely, and it, um, it was before I went to uni as well, but it was literally the last for me before I went to uni. Oh, right, right. So, um, it was, uh, I, I got to be much more educated how I represent, uh, wh- wh- how I know what I'm representing and in in what I'm doing, and especially how to make films as, and, and how to work with subject matters as well. Yeah. I mean, there's obviously your, your films, like, Upload, you know, you you mentioned um, uploaded and all that kind of stuff. Like, is, is that yeah. your was that your own kind of idea? Or was that you know? No, that, that was all the that was the brainchild of Connor Chadwick. Oh, was it? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, bus. I, I need to say this right now. Bus stop is like the only film I I truly written by myself. Um, Connor wrote uploaded because he made a film called Uploader. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I recall, I recall that when I I was going through his channel at one point. Yeah, and he made that back. I can't remember. I think it was two thousand. I think it was two thousand fourteen, two thousand fifteen. No, two thousand fourteen because I then asked him in two thousand fifteen. It, it might have been around the same time he made those Doctor Who fan films, um, which later became Overton Audios. Yeah, yeah, exactly, and. I asked him about that short film. I said, do you mind if I had the script and I had a go at directing a version of my own? And he said, yeah. He said, yes. And we collaborated on that. I think that was our first major collaboration between us two. Oh. And which opened the door to a lot more collaborations afterwards. <laughs> I mean, right now, that I can I can definitely say, it. yes, it did. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it did. <laughs> Completely. <laughs> Basically, everything I do now, Connor is involved in some. <laughs> <laughs> to be to be fair, I I think it works. Like you know, you two kind of collaborate on things. I mean, you know, for for example, I mean, we'll call back to what we were talking about with the prequel. I mean, he did an amazing job in the Oracle and kind of giving a background to that. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think a lot of what you two have done, like obviously, I mean, I mean, I'm, I'll be honest. I'm looking at your channel right now, like. Like seeing the actor of it, like you've got taken a lot of things from it, like say the act, the actor in it who later went on to become Nathan in your, you know, audio series. Yeah, so. exactly. Um, got like that was the Callum um Cam, he's a good he's a good lad, and he and I we we studied uh performing arts together, and he, I told him uh, I I want to make a short film, I wanted you to star in it, and. He was all up for it because he wanted to. He really wanted to get into acting for short films. Oh right! And he was a lot more aesthetic when I told him, "Oh, we're making a sequel," and he was very pumped for that. And Owen as well. Uh, I worked with Owen for who who plays the uh, the secondary the, the secondary lead in that film. Uh, I worked with him since two thousand and fourteen because uh, we made a film together. I can't remember if you remember. It's called uh, Lost Soul. All right. Yeah, it, 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 it's it's one of those fickle films that's had had a person who asked me, "Oh, can you take it down?" Or I should keep it back up again. Taking it's not taken down because I can't be bothered with the ha- hassle. But the, it, it's no longer online because an individual just did not want it online, and 
to be honest, a lot of us are green. It's like, yeah, it's, it's not aged well. <laughs> But, hey, look, it's it's just how some cast members are in certain situations that just come up. You know, we've like I said, we've all had to remove a video or, or two in, at some point. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's why I make contracts these days. <laughs> <laughs> good, good um, man. That's that's the right way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that's where me and Owen met, and we, we me and him talk a lot about projects I always want to do. Uh, we didn't get to do any of them, unfortunately. But um, yeah, we, we still. Uh, I do want. I, I do want to work with him more, uh, eventually. Uh, but with Callum, I when I was re- I had to recast for Nathan Chase, I couldn't think of anyone else, so I popped up to him saying, "Would you want to play this character?" And he was like, "Yeah, he was, he was all up for it because he wasn't much of a. I don't think he's much of a Doctor Who fan as everyone else, but he he was just up for it because he, he. I think he. He liked the character that I told him about and what the and what what we were doing with it. I think he was he, he just into that. Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest. Like when I saw Callum's, like when I saw, like when I saw the first volume, like it, and then, you know, obviously, I won't spoil it for people. If I mean, uh, it's been out for a while, but um, definitely the second volume, I felt like really, like he really. You know, obviously, at the end of it, there was this baby, but then when he grew up, like he was really this character that you got to know and you got to care about. And by the fourth volume, you're thinking, "Oh Jesus, please don't let this kid go." You know, <laughs> yeah. yeah. When you know, hindsight can be a great thing, but it also could be a terrible thing. <laughs> so I think no. when a lot of us watched that pre prequel, I think when we started listening to those audios, we we're like, "This poor kid, this poor kid." Yeah. Yeah, and th- that's why, um, I can't, like I'll be honest. I didn't after making the Uncharted past my many regrets out of all of the. So that's just that's me. Let me turn my computer. Uh, when when I when I made volume one, when we were writing volume four, I, I was saying to Connor, "Sorry, what was your, what, do you have a rule on swearing?" Yeah, it's okay. It's okay about swearing. Yeah. All right, I was, I was like, I was like, I was like, Connor's like, I really, my main fucking regret was uh, killing Nathan off. <laughs> <laughs> I want him to be alive. I want him to be with Amber. I want him to, to, to be, be, a, be a success. I want him to be, make the doctor proud. I want him to contribute to the world. I thought, this is such a great character that we wasted by killing him <laughs> off before his volume. To be fair, I mean, you did something with a character, I think, as like you gave someone the doctor like has a deep like this connection is deeper than most of his companions, and I think yeah. the fact that we all had we all knew where it was heading, but I think what you gave us you gave us a chance to know this character to you know be entwined you know entwined in what he goes through with the doctor, what he goes through with Amber, what he goes through a uh, Cole Hill, Jesus Cole Hill, but uh, it like. At the end, when there's that happy moment, I think it allows the audience to say, "Look, he there wasn't just what happened, and obviously, you know, when he died, like it really, like it, there was this nice bit where you know, obviously, with your doctor and him, that I just think, yeah, that's that's where you can kind of leave, you know, if if nobody wanted to go any further, they could just leave it there, and yeah, but um, I guess." If we're gonna jump on to the next part of that of your doctor's life, um, I'll ask you how did it come about Fractured Timeline? Like, uh, did it, I know you used to do some fan films before all this, and they were sort of a precursor or something like, along those lines. So, yeah. how how would you say you you started with the whole thing? Was it just um, well, if you remember, I I uh, for my first fan film uh, that I released it was um death and life or life and death. i can't remember what it was called but um it was I, I regenerated so i had no intention of playing the doctor going forward i had the intention of making a trilogy of fan film features based with a new doctor but they fell through because um oh wait some... dan can i just I'll, I'll just stop you one second i just have to go do something that will just two seconds sorry no worries.
just mildly mumbling. Just leave the mumbling to myself. Please, for the love of God, and this gets cut out of the podcast. <laughs> yep, sorry, I'm I'm back. So <laughs> no worries, no worries. Yeah. So look, we'll just we'll I'll just uh I'll I'll just start off that one. We'll just cut out. I'll cut out all the other bits in the in the edit. Nice. But um, yeah. So how would you say fracture timeline came about? Like what? <laughs> where, where where would you start off? Uh, like I I obviously know you made a couple of you made a few fan films before this, like Death and Life and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, def- definitely. Uh, if you remember. Uh, it ends with my regeneration, so it was meant to be that it would lead on to a new doctor, a, a, a new companion, but that fell through. You know, I was going to do a trilogy of feature films. That oh, fell right. uh, the first one was going to call, I think, if you remember that, what right. the, the Rise, of the, Rise of the Doctor was it? Or something? Yeah, yeah, Rise of the Doctor. That was what the original fan film was going to be called, and it was going to have my friend Josh be the doctor. <laughs> Is going to have um, it's going to just going to have someone as a companion, uh, who was and here here comes the fan film cliche. Who was my ex girlfriend? <laughs> ah, right. <laughs> yeah, so you, you can tell why that fell through. And we got through one day of filming, and I was just like, this is this is not going anywhere. I I, I, I we just couldn't do it, <laughs> and um, and I went back to the drawing board. I went back and I thought to myself. I can't want to come back as a doctor now because I was just like I I don't I only did like that one fan film and I don't feel like I did it properly, so I thought to myself, what if we did a series where it interlocks between two different incarnations of the Doctor at the same time? One episode could be with me, one episode could be with Josh, and all comes together in a multi uh, Doctor special at the end. Um, so that's where I was going to go for it next. But I think I can't remember what discussion me and Josh had. I think it was just, he wanted to focus more on music and. Uh, but so I respectfully said, "All right, fair enough." And it's just me again. I thought, "Okay, I'll just." Uh, there's a three hundred year gap between uh, during the death and life, so I, I will I will set the series there. I'll, that's that's my series set. So for a while, death and life was going to always be canon. It was always going to be where my doctor was going. We just had a like three hundred year gap. Was just going to have a series set between us. And I eventually met Anya, and she really wanted to get part of it. And she was pestering me because she was like, "Oh, come on, let's make a fan film. Let's make let's make something." <laughs> and it became. And then we got to twenty seventeen, and uh, Luke said to me, "He's like, well, you're both here. You both have your costumes. You could record a TARDIS scene." <laughs> so I quickly wrote up uh, a scene, and it be- that was the scene that was at the end of the spark. Oh, that was the takeoff scene, was it? Yeah, yeah. It was that point as well that I decided that I would no longer count uh, Death and Life as canon. That I would remaster that as a as a prequel with a new scene at the end that would tie in uh, to it to the to before episode one. Yeah. Oh, no, I know. I remember. It. Yeah. So literally, there was. I think there's, from what I remember, both versions. There's literally the cutoff point from where it begin. It kind of where like I could tell people this is where uncharted past ends and where fractured timeline kind of begins yeah um, you know with the the oracle scene being kind of beginning I guess yeah 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 the, the oracle scenes where it's where fractured timeline begins and the other thing as well is uh when ever uh, unfortunately, definitely, I was no longer available on YouTube. I've had people saying, well, "Why did you take it down? Why? Well, why is DW twenty twelve taking down all their old fan films?" Uh, <laughs> I I took it down because uh, an actor asked me to take it down. Oh, right. Yeah, I know that's that's fine. Yeah, so I thought to myself, "Well, I'm, ne- I'm never going to be, I'm never going to be referring to it again." I I, I know pro- someone out there likely has a copy out there somewhere. And it's not like I've deleted. I don't think it deleted. I think I just unlisted it. So if there's a link somewhere out there, it's still available somewhere. Hey, look, it's a, it's all good. I mean, I think people are just you you know into the like the new one kind of has become the de facto one anyway. So yeah. Um, 
what would you like um what would you say has kind of been your favorite episodes like so far to do i mean i know like the spark for me was definitely a kind of um an interesting episode but then i and then i look at the candidate and i think jesus <laughs> like the red the rat the person you got in from the brand was excellent as well so i just yeah i like you know i like all the you know the jobs i mean when i saw both saxon in the first episode i went wait what the hell <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah that was, that was, that's that's something that everyone keeps coming back like wait 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 who saxon is in this <laughs> <laughs> like i i i like I don't. This is gonna come off terrible. I was instantly thinking, is he gonna just look at the spark thing and just review it? <laughs> so, he's just gonna. Just and just, here we have this. Here we have this big shimmer and this big shimmer and fella. <laughs> and he just does the same like, "Hello, uh, hello, Doctor Who fans." <laughs> and today we're reviewing this uh, this spark creature, and he just turns to him and just like tackles him to the ground before he gets see <laughs> Uh, we should have done as an eye take. We should have done as an eye take. <laughs> the things you think of after you, the things you think of after uh, after three years, nearly three years since you filmed it. God, <laughs> uh, uh, I I think like the car. Um, what was the voice actor Luke Lane did a really good job on it. Like, oh it, yeah, he's very good. A uh, very good. Uh, and I didn't even answer the question because you said what my favorite episode was, and haven't even answered the question. Um, oh, it's okay. Uh, my favorite episode is uh. This is not easy, <laughs> um, because I'm proud of some. Like, I'm proud of each episode because each one is is something special to me. The first episode is obviously the first episode, the first full length full length episode I've ever made, and episode two was the was uh, and, people, and, and and the first and episode two was the very first time I ever wrote a full fan film for my doctor by, by myself. Oh. Because I, I wrote that before I wrote anything for Uncharted Past. Damn, that's that's pretty, that's, that's heavy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's that that's the first time I got to write for my doctor personally. That like uh, because I, Luke Luke helped a lot with writing episode one, and he because because he, he's he's seen I struggled to write episode one. I asked him, could you please help me? <laughs> and and I had to write episode two by myself, but now, now all the foundation work has been completed. I could just write it, and it'll just be Maggie and the Doctor. I mean, episode two, like I feel, was very good. I like, I'll be honest, I like the start of it, like the way that you guys kind of went around the universe, and then um, there was well, the Doctor and Maggie, I should say, for the viewers who want to understand, there was when they go around the universe and they kind of stop off at places, and it's just like and Maggie's like, nah, <laughs> back again. <laughs> Yeah, like that, 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 like it wasn't a script, uh, but we just basically decided to just improvise it because we, we had to go for a few planets. And I thought I I write a basic outline that the scene, and we'll just we'll just film it. And it was the, I think it was like the last thing we had to film as oh. well, because I remember I only had like three days, so I had to like leave for uni and buy that, and I couldn't fit my doctor's costume with me, so I was like, okay. If if I, if I this is this is the time to get it done because we don't get this we don't have an opening scene. Ah uh, yeah, yeah, I mean uh, like, I mean to be fair, uh, was it? I was tell, I, I was wanted to ask you was that the same beach you guys that fall the doctor was filmed on that you guys went to? It's the same area, but it, it's uh it, it's within the same area, but it's not like the exact same parts of the beach. But yeah, it's it is the same sort of beach, yeah. Oh, did you film? Was it all? Did you film Follow the Doctor and that on the same day, or was this a, a different a, di- a different day? Same location, but different part of that beach. Yeah, but it is the same. It's the same beach. Yeah, oh. it's a different part. Different part. It's a good beach. I'll be honest. I mean, most beaches are just sandy. You know, yeah. So I was like, oh, rocks. <laughs> we we filmed that down in Don in what was I uh, in Bonkrana. Bon- I have no clue where Bonkrana is. Oh. <laughs> uh, it's it's um it is down the republic so uh we is actually that, found... is that Donegal or something is there or... uh just I, I think it's it's County Donegal yeah yeah I don't know I, mean, I I've been up there I mean I somehow ended up there at least once last year so like I'll be honest it's, it was nice up there so oh yes it's beautiful it's beautiful we need them I mean I'll be honest I I understand completely why when when Luke and Meg came up there were like oh my god this is perfect filming location here like 
Yeah, yeah, and they were just they, they keep saying to me it's like we got keep, we got to find a way to film a whole episode for series five or something. Like I, I I don't know, but uh, I, but who knows? Maybe maybe series five will feature Ireland at some point. I don't know. Just just tell them come bring them to Cork. Cork is a lovely place, lovely <laughs> lovely vast scene. <laughs> yes, but uh, it's kind of well. I'm I'm here in Derry, which is all the way yonder to the north. <laughs> and you're in Cork, which is. Is is as safe as safe as you can get. I I find it crazy that we like we ended up talking to one another. I'm just like, yeah, we're both talking to one another, and we're both at the different ends of the fucking country. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, how did this happen? I know, right? I know, right? We're we're, we're probably like we're both two I- Irish Doc Two fans, but we couldn't be further away from in, in Ireland as we possibly could. <laughs> And when people, and I say, if people in Britain look over and say, "Ah, it's not that far," I go, "Trust me, it, it when you when you live somewhere as we do, it is that far." <laughs> well, Britain, they they have train services that can get them anywhere. We don't. And I mean, well, to be fair, we have one, but even then, we have it's, one. It we takes have, ages. We have, we have one. Now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, I, I, my buddy showed me this the other day. I was um, the, the railways back in the like nineteen oh two or something or nineteen twenty six. Jesus, man, we we lost so much over the over the years. <laughs> we were such a railway esque uh, co- country, and we just lost it. <laughs> yeah, oh. damn motors. <laughs> well, ho- hopefully, we we will improve eventually. Hopefully, but um, yeah. I mean, I'll be honest with you, like that second episode was a very like I liked how you had. Obviously, you had three char- you know, very three, you know, characters in it yourself, Maggie, and um, I'm trying to remember your man's name. I'm very sorry. Yeah, uh, yeah like when he was there, you know, it was kind of it was nice that you guys kind of kept it contained to three, so that the audience could kind of get an idea of everybody and kind of, you know, feel yeah. you know feel, feel something for this sort of like what he's going through as much as everyone else, and then the candidates when you had the the walk the person who was it Tom? I'm yeah, to... Tom. Nah, yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, Tom was such a small character in the candidate, but he, the um, the kind of impact that the guy gave with the whole, you know, with everything that the Ranny was doing, it was, it was interesting. Yeah. I, I, I like, like, I thought it was, honestly, the acting from yourself and Anya in the candidate, I think, is some of the best I've ever seen in a fan film. You know, yes, because like that scene, that that small scene between the two of you, by I think it was the London Eye, or something around there. It was it was in a it was a it was a, it's um it's just I forget it's Higher Bridge what we called um the I think it was but next to, next to the Thames yeah next to the Thames yeah and I think that small scene like it's you know it felt for me very much like you know. A great moment, a great kind of bonding moment, you know, for the two of them. Like that, they've they've gone through so much kind of you know stuff together. But this this thing is where the doctor really kind of gets to know Maggie more. Like he kind of, yeah. and I think the ending to that episode. I don't know why, but it just felt sweet. It's it's like Jesus. <laughs> yeah, um, I have to do my own horn, but um, yeah, it had the best acting in the. From me and Anya to for the series, but um, but as well as the ending was meant to be completely different. I was meant to give this, I think what Carl originally written was this uh big, uh scene about like explaining ins and outs of the the space time, uh the timeline how I was able to do it. So I was like, I, I, I was like, can I just say it's because she was crying? <laughs> <laughs> I mean that's easier. I mean, look in Doctor Who they have to do that as well sometimes because I think what was it at the end of it Stephen Moffat was like. Peter, I don't want to give you so much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But no, it was honestly like you did it simple and it worked. Like, cause I think, you know, that bit where you were like plan- the planet Starbucks, I was like, planet Starbucks. Uh, and then I realized, oh crap, I've not seen a lot of, listened to a lot of <laughs> over the audios. Yeah. But uh, when that scene where you, you kind of leave and you're just telling her, watch the thing. And I don't know, I just, Maybe you know it makes me like I always see when I watch your doctor I always think, you know some people might think he's only just the Irish fella he's just you know what you know whatever and just this kind of guy you know maybe you know like yeah. I, you know care maybe or something I don't know I'm just trying to like say a bit but like 
when in that moment I felt that's a good like that's a great scene because it kind of allows I know some type of closure for the car for Maggie's character to you know in that with that whole thing going on, which is kind of ironic now since you know I can't I you know with I don't even know what's happening um, in the future, but you know, yeah, it's um. It's definitely going to get developed more in a, in the in the next episode. The thing is, though, I keep saying it's episode four, but not season two, episode one. Like I'll call them the mention of the Daleks. Will the mention of Daleks is is is, is going to be a fickle one? I'll be honest because it's a. I mean, you're there. There, like for one thing, <laughs> the Daleks. Yes, the Daleks is um. It's, it's going to be you know when it's an episode of the Daleks is always it's you know you're in for quite the ride there, but uh, with episode four. I can't confirm much, but it does conclude Maggie's story completely. Oh, so uh, it's it's also written as a point where if Anya does feel like if she, this is this is where she wants to depart from the role, this this is a, a time. But at the same time, it's it's the it's her closure episode, basically. Ah, uh, her like the kind of story development parts, like, you know, that, yeah, that, the, that, yeah. The conclusion of what her character's been going through and this is her facing, because the Daleks killed her brother and this is her facing off against Daleks from a different dimension, even though it's not the same Daleks, it's, it's yeah. definitely her confronting her demons in this episode. That's, I mean, that's, that's, that's deep, man. I mean, I, like, I won't lie to you, like, that's a, because, like, obviously with the Daleks, they're, you know, they're always written as this kind of, you know, when people see them now in the show, they kind of go, they just this thing, whatever. But when they have a, you know, when the companion actually has a kind of connection to them that, you know, not a lot of people would understand, it's it's gripping. You know, it kind of things, it makes you think, get him, kill that Derelict. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... <laughs> I was just thinking. I was just thinking that as an outtake, just pretend they're like just dying, dying or something. <laughs> yeah. Like imagine, like imagine, oh, yeah, just like I like, take it, just like just carrying it from to limb, just like I can do, I can do so much. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Oh. Oh, that's hilarious. But unfortunately, the Daleks are CGI, so it won't it won't be as good. <laughs> Imagine just the CJ Derelicts just there, like, just, uh, you, what are you, you doing? <laughs> to have like the, the wee tennis ball down. That, that, that's that's what she's targeting. That's where she's outlet. <laughs> that's her outlet for that reach. To say, here's a pinata. Go nuts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, I'm honestly, it's. I think I, like I'm looking forward to seeing what the story, you know, what the story kind of becomes because. Obviously, I I can't say much about it. I won't say anything about it because, you know, there's no the you know I won't say nothing. Like my li- my lips are sealed. <laughs> we'll say you're involved. You you do have involvement with it because <laughs> I I walk I walk past with a cup. <laughs> that's what, that's what I do. <laughs> I walk past the screen, say hi with a, with like maybe a Costa or something or a Starbucks cup, and just go product placement. Goodbye. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, just, just like you are, you you are, you will be. You watch, have you watched the Mandalorian? Uh, yeah, I've I've seen it. Yeah, you are that person in the trousers from that one episode. Yeah, in the background. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, it's better than being like one of those sponsorship things where I go, "Do you want to use NordVPN, <laughs> or do you like Surfshark?" <laughs> yeah. God, does it, that the Daleks are, and well, it's certainly unsafe to be on Earth with, with the Daleks about, but it's also be very unsafe it's safe to be on the internet with Vinyl VPN, and that's why we have today's sponsor. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> As, uh, oh. If, you, Nord, if you're if you're listening to this, uh, we wouldn't mind at all because we're and the fan films we don't get. You don't get nothing from them because uh, BBC are targeting uh, and targeting us at the moment. So wherever you can, Surfshark, give me any, give me anything like our gym shark. Give me some gym stuff. I, I love your clothes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, but um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I'll, I'll just ask you about like 
as regards to like obviously well Luke, I know you guys kinda of started out from, you know, back in twenty thirteen, I think it was, when you kind of you know, you obviously asked you to be the VFX guy and you know, help yeah. him out with stuff. But um what would you in that whole series, what would you say, like, obviously, other than Fall of the Doctor, because we've already discussed 300 frames, or 300 VFX shots, Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> um, <sighs> I know, it's a lot, that's a lot, man. Um, what would you say was the, like, what would you say, other than Fall of the Doctor, was the best, like, the best episode you think you've done, like, other than that for VFX, then? Oh, like, VFX-wise? Yeah, or even any anything like anything you feel you want to talk about with that. Wow, well, I I really did like um the series four finale. I I, I did a lot of VFX for that. that I'm really proud of. Um, there's some things for series five that I'm very proud of. That I really can't talk about. No problem. <laughs> it's no problem. Um, what else is there? Else I know there are going to be some, some fans like trying to stick a hole in my mouth and just say, "Would you <laughs> tell us what you know?" I know nothing. I know not. Dan told me nothing. <laughs> <laughs> um, thing is, is uh, I'm sworn to complete secrecy. We're about series five completely. Hey, because... No problem. Look, it, it, because that... as well as I, I know that uh, this is what people, <laughs> uh, everyone in DW2012 knows what everyone in DW2012 is doing. No, I only know what I need to know to make my series functional. And Luke only knows what he needs to know to, to know that I'm not going to do something that retcons what he's doing. Yeah. Besides that, we're all. I, I am. I think I'm the one in DW 2012 uh, who knows the least what's going on with Series Five. Hey, look, that's better to be than to know everything. To know everything yeah. and be like, oh god. And, <laughs> and people are like, oh, is that because Luke doesn't trust you anymore? No, it's because when Luke gave, gave me everything, everyone kept asking me for it. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, I, I mean that must be what it was like for when they were doing the remastered series. I mean, the minute George came on as the blonde doctor, I mean he mo- uh, uh, he he was getting questions. When's their blonde doctor series? When are you getting it? And he's and he's there like, Dom's not finished his series yet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and there's just so much going on at the moment, and it's um, I really want. No, I really want George to have a series. I don't know if they are going to be doing a series again. I don't know things. Oh, uh, I mean, like I've talked to him, and I I won't say anything. Oh, like, he was on the podcast, wasn't he? He was on the podcast. Yeah. Oh no, he's honestly like George. If you're listening, fantastic podcast, man. You're a great, you're a great lad to talk to on and off. <laughs> like he, like honestly, he's sound out. Like when I, you know, just chatting away to him or just. Like as even as a doctor, he just he does he does something, you know. Like I listened to his audio. Yeah, did you listen to the Wave Two one with him and John Hurt? Like obviously John. <laughs> uh, George, like he, I think he's he's just great to talk to, and he's just a fantastic doctor. Like he, you know, the Wave the Wave Two short short trips audio he did with the War Doctor, like that. Like that for me gave a whole new layer to his doctor. That obviously. On, in the fan film where there's a lot of it kind of doesn't allow for a lot of that to be shown. Yeah, I, I, I I'm not really talking to George that much. I must, I must remedy that at some point. But we've always got along every time I see him at cons, and he's always been very supportive. Whenever uh, we've been having trouble, he's always been he, he's always in the comments somewhere. He's always a very supportive, very nice fellow. Oh, definitely. He he's just all, he's just a one hundred percent genuine guy. Like, and he, he he is he is as golden as the hair on his head. <laughs> that 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 should be a quote on something. Like, he is as golden as the hair on his. Head. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what is it? Uh, what am I trying to say? Oh, I'm losing my track. Of my words. Uh, I I heard a thing. Is it true? He, George said this to me. I don't know what I'm trying to think. Is this true? When you when the um, 50th anniversary thing was getting remastered, did were you two not actually together on the same day? No, um, <laughs> because we I was originally meant to. We were all all three of us were originally meant to be there on the same day, and I was very excited because I I've only really hung out with him I think briefly once in a comic con, so I was like oh yeah I get I get to finally hang out with. With George and uh, but no, uh, 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 the, the the train service had to 
had to be the, the be the typical selves and go through a lot of maintenance trouble and cause several delays that ended up and George having to cancel his his whole trip. Oh no! Because um he, he couldn't come uh, any later because he had I think he had work the next day. Is if he came any later, he risking his own sleep and uh, or if he, he couldn't come the next day because he had work. So it was it was a real it was a real and it all happened the day we were about to shoot it. So we we suddenly didn't have George. So oh yeah, so you guys rescheduled around to you just do the scenes with you and Luke and then obviously fix George's yeah. let get George's done later. Yeah, and Luke um just wrote uh George into I don't know if he he probably yeah, he probably wrote George in with us and I'll be honest in that wide shot we're all making that that, that force field I was like I, I, you could swear George was there on the day but he wasn't I mean honestly great like it, it's it's a good it's good use it's kind of good the effects there like because it's oh yeah yeah I mean it's it, like because obviously you're all making sure to stand as just as far enough away from each other that no one's gonna know <laughs> no yeah, one's yeah. gonna know <laughs> but um no I mean it was a great thing to watch. And I liked how, you know, obviously I've seen the first one like back in 2013 and seeing like the difference from that to now with your doctor getting a lot more prominence. It was very nice. It was very nice to see that, I guess, you know, like, you know, and the whole, you know, and your storyline kind of being um, woven in to the whole thing with what's going on in Fractured Timeline currently. Yeah, the whole regeneration there, I think. Oh yeah, and I love how your doctor when it's like the thing is coming to take his life force, he's like, Don't you dare. Don't you <laughs> Don't you dare. <laughs> and uh, it's funny that because when I originally filmed because like in the original I could only film my bits on green screen or as external as scenes where where I'm by myself. I always kept saying something like oh, I wish I could have been more part of it. It was like but unfortunately there there is the there's the sea between us yeah the <laughs> the and uh we were saying well hopefully one day we'll, we will get to and here we are we got to do the remaster I, my doctor has not been much more firmly established and i finally got to go down and be a part of it i got to do a much more prominent part of of it be a much more prominent part of that story so it all came full circle in the end yeah and i mean i love the bit at the end where you just go i am never taking you off again <laughs> Oh, you'll keep that from us, certainly. And then, I, and then I just think, wait a minute, in the in the second episode. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, in the second episode. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I think it's like your doctor's just thinking, what can I do in this situation? I'm trapped. Oh yeah, <laughs> pull the ring off. <laughs> yeah, but you see as well, he 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 had to really contemplate it. Oh yeah, he was thinking in that moment, you know, quick thinking. I think that's what the doctor does in a lot of situations. He just you know, hundreds of different ways to get out of uh, a trap. And then he's just like, well, this one's the quickest. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I know that's that's your engagement ring, isn't it? The... No, no, that, that, that's just a normal ring. Uh, uh, Anya's the one has the engagement ring. Oh, right. Oh, Jesus. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. No, uh, uh, no, she didn't propose to me. I proposed to her. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. Oh, no. I, I thought when you get engaged, you bought her rings. I didn't know it was just. No, the... no. Um, uh, that that ring was um, that ring is a glow in the dark Irish Celtic ring. Oh well. <laughs> so it doesn't come off across a, on camera, but it does glow in the dark, and we might uh, utilize that at some point where you see it glow up. But um, yeah, it, it does glow in the dark. I don't know, but it is. It's kind of nice that you know. You kind of give your doctor a bit more kind of um, urgency. Because obviously he's got this whole era thing going on, and like regeneration is always just put off as like, oh yeah, you know, you have post regeneration sickness, and then you're cool, and then when you regenerate, you just regenerate and it's done. But you, it's more, we're, we're on a bit of a timer here. It's kind of going. It's been stretched out a little bit. Yeah, it's been. It's going to be stretched, and he's it's stretched out for three hundred years here. So it's just sort of like he's a slow. It. it, it I, I don't know what the the best analogy would be. Is sort of like. Uh, most regenerations are prepared more like fast food, whereas mine's is being more like a, a is a finely steamed, 
finally steam what would you let like, you know you steam up food i don't know what it is but it takes forever it's, it's like when like i think a lot of re- i can put it as steaks sometimes you get them raw sometimes you get a medium and sometimes you get them re- well done yeah. yours is the well done we're waiting for it oh yeah it's well done it's good and it's taking it's, it's, it's taking its ass time getting here that's the thing it's like the inside the doctor's mind the other the next incarnation is just running and he's just like jesus how long does it take <laughs> I mean, two incarnations have gone since I started regenerating. I mean, gee, yeah, Jesus, Nathan's gone. Who else is gone? Pete, uh, Pete has now departed, and it's um. Oh yeah, Pete. Yeah, I forgot. I'm so sorry. The young, but... the young doctor is now now departed the the, the universe. It's it's kind of weird. Like yeah, like I you know that two doctors are now you know gone. You know, it's kind of it's just like on the weird. same. They left on the exact same day on the same hour. Oh my god, it's it's weird because it's like you know. I mean, obviously when Luke went, everyone was like Jesus. But then when Nathan and Pete went on the same, you know, as you said on the same day, it was kind of like, oh wow, this is this universe just got a whole lot smaller. <laughs> and then I, I I don't know. I think who else is next? Um, I think it is me who's next. <laughs> Oh gee, it's like I mean to be fair. I mean Dan, the way things going, like I mean I could end up catching up to you. I mean with my doctor, like he could. I would just tell like, all right, bye. I'm going to die. <laughs> you. Yep. Imagine if I'm left before me. I would actually, honest to God, if that happened, I would. Just if that happened. Like, if Dom I, left he's before me, I'm just I'm done. I'm done. Not I'm not doing it. I can't. I can't do this anymore. I feel like my I feel like my doctor like if it was in if it was some way my doctor could cross over to your universe he'd probably just go knock on your door and go Are you hurry hurry up a little bit by come on it's like <laughs> I don't know if he just he's like, doctor. Man, look at this do you know what this is this is regeneration energy and you just stab me across the face like now come on with you come on with you I just go dude I got dude I'll get stabbed and I'll go faster than you <laughs> oh nails can regenerate faster than you can. To be fair, I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of weird. like that's kind of why when I made my doctor, I I had to think, okay, if anyone's gonna come up with a name for him, it's gonna be me because I'm not gonna, <laughs> like, because obviously you know you have the title of the Irish doctor, and I'm ne- like I am never gonna refer to myself as the other Irish doctor or something. So I went with the Burgundy doctor because I wear a lot of Burgundy, so. Oh. Because I, I saw when Dom when Dom and Luke had the title, you know, little red and you know purple or so what was part? It wasn't purple, was it? Or yeah, purple doctor. Yeah, I just went okay. So I'll go burgundy. I got a lot of burgundy here and or red, whatever. I I wasn't gonna go red, so I went all right. Burgundy is a good color. <laughs> Let's roll with that. But uh, yeah, and like, Could, I, I, I use your podcast to just quickly address something. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> it was. Who think I gen- did generally change the Irish doctor's name to the Green Shelby Doctor? That was April Fool's joke. <laughs> Why did you get a lot? Of, did you get a lot of comments? <laughs> yeah, I- I've had so many people asking, are-, "Are you serious?" Okay, and 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 people who've made videos in relation to the Irish Doctor have actually now changed their names to the the Green Shelby Doctor. I'm like, no, 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 no. this. this- <laughs> So badly, no. I mean, that's that'd be too fair. A lot of the fans really do like they take some things literal. I mean, when you know, when the April Fool's last year or the year before, when Meg, the Luke's like Luke or one of them put out yeah. things saying Meg was gonna be the doctor, everyone was like, Oh my god, really? What's happening here? <laughs> There's no bomb to check the day before they before they think of something is adequate. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't think, do they not look at the fucking date? It is like. <laughs> Is the is the worst day for everyone because I, I, I don't know if you if you uh if you watch Zack Snyder's study you watch the Zack Snyder's Justice League, I've seen parts the Wally uh, not Wally West Barry Allen's running scene for example yeah. I've seen that yeah, I I do recommend watching the whole thing it is four hours long and it, it it's too long but it is worth the watch um I, I remember uh campaigning being part of the campaign for the re- restore the Snyderverse. Oh yeah. And th- there was like people saying, oh the, the Snyderverse has been restored with Zack Snyder's Just League 2 coming uh this day. I'm like, yes, yes. Okay, um what day is it today? It's like are you f- f- fucking <laughs> <laughs> in that moment you just lose your temper. You're just like, damn it. He's <laughs> like, why would you lie about something that's being campaigned about? 
I mean, that's the same with Sam Raimi Spider Man fans. Like, you know, when I, when I, like, whenever someone tries to say, oh, Spider Man 4, and I went, don't do this to me. Don't, don't do this. To me. I remember don't, that, that. I remember Marvel Comics did something. Four, they, yeah. They released they, four with a web, and I was like, you bastards. <laughs> like, yeah, they're not, they're not. And it turned out it was a count down to a new Spider Man comic. I was like, you bastards. <laughs> Who started was, the count down before? <laughs> I to be honest, right? I like I've seen obviously you you've seen that Tim Bur- like Tim Burton's or uh, Michael Keaton's Batman and Sup- and Green Superman are getting a, a comic book series like kind of adapting off their films. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. And and I really when I saw those, I was like, why can't why can't Sam Raimi Spider Man get one of those? Like you know, Marvel would literally sell so many copies in one day over that. Like. Yeah, exactly. You could make it a reality. You could, e- they could easily make it a comic book. Yeah, I mean, like Sam Raimi himself has said that he does like, you know, the comics a bit. Like, he lo- he's very, you know, into the uh, 60s, 70s version of Spider-Man. And so why not give him a comic to, you know, look at and work with writers and, you know, yeah. do... I don't know. Yeah. But, um... Nice yeah. Nice. He wants to... He, he he was planning on doing a comic book about uh, Ben Affleck's Batman and the and the and his version of Death Death of the Family with Jason Todd. Oh, yeah, about about how that that, that actually happens. But uh, I don't know why he said it didn't happen. Just, I don't know. Maybe, maybe there is something going on, or maybe it's so, still... WB are just they're they're very. I'll be honest, man. Like the way that they they've been handling current situations in regards to like either Amber Heard, Ray Fisher, or it's. Yeah, Dude, don't 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 take. Talk, uh, I can go on a whole rant about what, how much I hate Warner Brothers currently. Don't worry, man. We'll, we'll leave that part out. Just to, yeah. We'll, just, say, look, we'll just we'll all just say look. We'll say say that for a separate podcast or video okay. or whatever. <laughs> Next time, <laughs> but um, yeah, no. I mean, the growth, the whole green should be doctor thing. I think definitely turned a couple of heads. I I mean. I'll be honest, man. The DW twenty twelve fans, they they want if they want something, they'll campaign for it. Like, <laughs> yeah. The thing is, though, I'm not going to name names here because uh, I don't want to embarrass anyone. But a couple people from DW twenty twelve also thought I was real. Oh no! Changed some of the titles of my appearances. Oh no! <laughs> I had to go to them very quickly and say no, 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 no. <laughs> oh. I- in all fairness, it's probably my fault. I probably should explain to them I was going to do it as a joke first. Yeah, I don't know. It's just like make them know, make them know, just so they know. <laughs> yeah, but I think as well as I, I made it too convincing of an argument saying, "Oh, it's because people think it's in, it's uh, politically incorrect to call someone uh, Irish, even though I am Irish." What? <laughs> I, I did have someone comments that once, like, "Is it is it racist to call?" Uh, Call the Irish doctor the Irish doctor. Would mean they calling Dom the, the the you know the black doctor? I was like, well, I'm Irish, so I don't I don't think it's incorrect. I mean, Jesus, imagine if imagine if I like if I start doing my fan from Sunday and people start going, oh, he's the Northern, he's the Northern Irish, and he's the Republic Irish. I go, no, he's the Irish doctor, and I'm the Burgundy. <laughs> there's no there's no separatism here. What the hell is this? <laughs> We're not doing politics here, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Thank I'm not going. I'm not going into the politics of it all. I'm just. I'm just Irish. I'm just Irish. Yeah, and and I like the color of my clothes. <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. It's it's weird, but um, it's weird people. People are weird about about things like this. And it's just like I I get it. It's just sort of like it isn't it, isn't it racist. Like no, it's it's not racist. And I people keep th- thinking. We the Irish are so like uh, sensitive about our representation. It was like, like how people like whenever TV shows like show us as drunk, depressed alcoholics. I mean, I remember the what was it, the Christmas episode mini swords from series three. I think it was where it was you and Luke and somebody else, and you were you were in the terrace. And I think there was something mentioned about like the driving or something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it, I mean, look, it's if it's done in good humor, like with us, I think it's just good humor, you know? 
Yeah, and plus we like good humor in the end of the day. I mean, we we don't really mind. I like I don't even mind. I don't mind. My family doesn't mind. We're we're Irish Catholics all the way. Hey, same. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I think it's just like having a laugh and you know just. I mean, I don't. I mean, like. I think with my but like, what is it? I said to my buddy, what should I do with my doctor, like, in the first episode? And he goes, let him have a drink. <laughs> <laughs> I said, eh, I don't know. But um, I'll, I'll, I'll say this. What would you, what would, like, what advice would you give to somebody who, I I know you so much probably said this to you before, but, like, what's the, uh, like, I'll say this. What's the one bit of advice you would say to someone to not do when you're, <laughs> when you're trying to do something like what, well, you know, pe- people are doing like fan films or like a fan film about the doctor or anything. Don't start off your big idea because that's what I tried to do. And it took me forever to get off the floor, off the ground. Um, I want to do a big, like the hour long opening episode with all this, these big villains and Daleks and Sarah men. And like, yes, this would be awesome. I want to, be I want to do like a crossover of Luke, and I want to have like uh like Dale's the brig in it, and I want to have uh what else do I have? I want to have like this, this, and that character, and I want to have, try as well get this, and then I realized I was going too ambitious for my own good. <laughs> yeah. So don't go too ambitious for your first episode. Just just show people what you can do, and then keep adding to your strengths, like. Ep- we did. We never. We never. We never thought we'd make an episode in London with the Ronnie. We just. We did it because uh, the opportunity presented itself after building upon episodes one and two. Yeah, I don't always say, like. I definitely like. I'll be honest. The candidate feels like uh, the be- like the pinnacle of what you'd like. It seems like you guys went a level above with that. With that one straight away. Like when I just when like- I saw. When I saw you got in the Rani and stuff like that, and I was like, oh Jesus, we're getting serious now. <laughs> yeah, just 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 wait till I uh, dimension the Daleks, my friend. That's oh, that's going to be. I I'll actually I'll cross over to next. Like, what do you think? What do you think your next? Pro- obviously, your next project is going to be Dimension of the Daleks, which I can't. I won't say anything about it. Whatever you want to say on here is your own. <laughs> I will say it's my longest script so far. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> uh, no, I still need to go in and review it. But currently, as of recording of this podcast, it is sixty-five pages. My god! <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's it's it's uh, and it's been completed for a, a good while now. But I do need to go and iron it down and try and cut that page number down. But we're looking at a good, probably hour-long episode here. Hey, that's not bad. That's a good. That's not, good. not bad at all. But I would like to cut down, uh, and just cut off all that slack, off. You know, but uh, you're saying what my my next uh project was, wasn't it? Yeah, like any any projects other other like obviously other than dimensions of the Dallas, anything like your own stuff or you know, yeah, or already other Doctor Who stuff, whatever, whatever, you know, whatever is. I, I do have a few few projects in the works, a couple of Doctor Who ones I can't talk about right now. But I'm, I've also just written a a, a script. That I literally just well, I've written it back in 2019, uh, September 2019. So I haven't touched it in two years. It is my grad film script that I pitched to get made in university, and it nearly did get made, but um, in the, it, it got voted out in the end. But the pandemic would have seen a stop to it anyway. So. I've rewritten that. That's my original grad film, and I plan to make it uh, into a short film, probably sometime this year, next year. Oh, very good. That's going to be a proper. That's going to be a very properly made short film. I'm I'm currently looking out for a producer to help me get that done. I'm looking into uh, getting it funded, uh, either by means of getting someone who will fund it or crowdfunding. It is. Uh, it is it's going to be my biggest uh, short film yet, and it's um, it, it it's calling a lot of uh, personal experience as well. Oh, I well, Jesus, I I am looking forward to seeing what that what that what that comes out as like because you know it's a I like when there's kind of a deep emotional side to it because I 
I made a film one, uh, last year called Gone, which is about kind of uh, someone dealing with grief. And I re- I think it, it really kind of delved into my, my kind of grief that I had over a relative. And I don't know, I just, it's one of them things. Yeah. Yes. That, 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 that is, um, grief has always been, I don't know. I, I I like to think grief is my reoccurring theme whenever I do things, like Fractured Timeline is built around grief, and Bus Stop, which is my favorite short film, is based on the grief of losing someone as well. And this film that I'm pitching, I mean, the, the, the only thing I will say about it is that it's uh, grieving whilst also going through addiction. Ah, right. So two very big subjects that I, I'm sort of trying to represents here and uh it's uh unlike like what i've done before I've, i have done so much research into this i've went to so many people about this this script to make sure that i'm representing the uh, addiction aspect of it well because i know grief i know grief like the back of my hands uh but what i don't know too much is uh addiction uh addiction is something I know of, but it's something I don't. I've never experienced. I know people who've gone through addiction, but I, uh, it's something that I'll need to make sure for them. I need to represent it correctly. Okay, no, I, I, I definitely agree with you on that. Like, because misre- like uh, misre- misrepresentation has been a massive thing in a lot of films or you know yeah. TV or whatever over the years. So it's kind of good to keep on top of it and just make sure it's okay yeah but uh yeah um so i'll, I'll just about projects like obviously with audio so you've announced the big one coming up the sherlock series which oh. i'm i'm honest i'm looking forward to it because you know <laughs> it's a what would you say sherlock's been off the air for nearly five years now so i'm kind of in yeah our, kind of crunching it for a bit more uh, Sherlock content, whatever that may be. <laughs> yeah, and I, this is actually, an idea, I actually brought up the idea of doing this Sherlock uh, volume of Connor. This idea uh, came around the same time as this, as, as the film I just uh, told you, because I thought to myself, as I was like getting a little bit bored of doing that script, I was like, oh, I'd love to do something like Sherlock right now. <laughs> and ironically, I also did Sherlock Holmes as my dissertation for uni. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so I was like, I definitely want to do something with Sherlock, and I told Connor my idea. Uh, I don't know if I can confirm much, but I, I, I confirmed the setting. It's not like the, it's not like the the late eighteen nineties. It is actually the or it's actually, uh, post uh World War One, Britain. All right, that's the setting of our Sherlock Holmes and, uh, what's. And Doctor Watson, who I'm playing Doctor Watson in it, and Doctor Watson will be Irish. Hey, no, nah, not bad. I, I'm very, very happy. There. And Irish, Irish Watson. There we go. It's like, look, and if anyone goes, does he drink? Really? <laughs> the, well, John Watson does drink, so yes. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but no, I, drink, I, I, you I, drink? I, I, Do you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> But um, I mean, uh, if someone go, as I said, if someone goes to me, does your doctor drink? Yes. <laughs> but um, no, I I'm looking forward to it now because it's like what you said about it so far has really got me interested. When you said it's not the same, like you know, two 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 B to one B Baker Street, it's and it's not you know the same kind of setting or whatever. It's somewhere else. It's different and. But it's still, you know, the same kind of, um, kind of things that people will be familiar with, and I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing it. I just, I, you know, I, I as I said, just like it's nice to see someone do, you know, obviously Nathan did his own take on Sherlock, yeah, you know, so it'd be nice to see what your take would be, you and Connor's take would be. Sorry, yeah, um, it, it, I do like what we're doing with our Sherlock Holmes it's um it's definitely I feel like a unique take on the Holmes and Watson uh dynamic because it isn't the, it isn't the same like they we, we do discuss how they meet it's not the same as 
they would meet in the original stories or I don't know or how they've met in the in the TV show. It's a very different take in how they've been introduced to one another. It's not Doctor Strange meeting uh, that fella, that agent from MCU guys, just so you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just so you know, guys, it's not Benedict. All right. He's Doctor, uh, he's Doctor Strange now. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but, uh, against... no. Oh, wait, sorry. Doctor Strange and Bill Baggins, you mean? Oh, my God, yeah. I forgot, <laughs> I forgot about the Hobbit. Jesus. Yeah. Oh, I mean, if you want to go further, Bilbo Baggins and the dragon. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> imagine imagine if that was like, if someone recreated the first meeting scene where he's the big dragon and he's Bilbo Baggins. He's like, let, let, let us fly, smoke, solve some crimes. <laughs> it's like, you all right, Mr. Baggins? <laughs> uh, I remember the only two Irish, like, two, what was it, were they dwarfs or or what are they called hobbits and that and they were, and I was like are they Irish <laughs> yeah <laughs> Aaron, look it's it, it was good but um what would you say? I'll, I'll ask you like I know you've probably been asked before what was it what was the feeling when you kind of wrote um spoilers that last scene in kind of volume four with Nathan and you know who uh, we I won't say who it is because uh, uh, just just skip this if you haven't seen, seen volume. Yeah, four, four skip about skip about let's say five to seven minutes. Yeah. Uh, so you're talking about the master, right? <laughs> uh, I was going. Well, to be fair, we'll go with the master first. I, I was going to say Fiona, but we'll go with the master first. Oh, Fiona, yeah, that 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 scene. <laughs> oh, that was um. That was a scene I've had planned since the end of Volume One, so that's always been planned to happen. Or that Nathan goes back and sees his mom one last time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always been planned for that to be the Nathan's um like final journey. That that's the last thing he'll do with the Doctor whilst uh, they're that you know together. Oh, ah, yeah. I, the... I, I planned the seeds for that all the way back last episode of Volume One because. Um, she said that the nurse said who, the, 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 the actress who played the nurse in, uh, in the volume one finale came back to play that same nurse in the uh, uh, volume four finale. Yeah, fair play, it's work. <laughs> yeah, because uh, like, if I can get that, that just adds more to the authentic, like it makes, makes it feel more, more authentically back in that time. I mean, um, I, I mean, for me, I was just, I'm the guy who... Oh, but you were in it! You were the doctor! <laughs> you were well, the doctor. Not the doctor, but the, the, imagine if I just showed up in the burgundy thing and said, "I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sir. We're gonna have to take her." And I'm just, I'm just there in my fucking jacket. You're the one who told Nathan to get out. <laughs> I swear, like, like for anyone who doesn't know, I I voice the doctor who basically takes Fiona away to her death. If if that makes any An sense, an actual medical doctor, not 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 the doctor. He's yeah. he played a a simple a doctor, not the doctor. Yeah, I play deed. I, if if this thing, if you're listening to this thing about, let's say a year, let's put a year on this. Uh, uh, if you're listening to this a year on, no, I'm not playing the Burgundy Doctor at this current moment. I was playing a doctor in a hospital. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I when you gave me that line, those lines to say, and when I found out what they were for, I was like, oh no, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm the one who pulls the oh, trigger. <laughs> I think Connor was one time you were playing it. I was like, wait, does he know not to say anything? <laughs> so I, I thought that was you like, saying, uh, saying, I know the scene you're recording for right now, so please keep it a secret. It's the biggest surprise. Yeah. Of all like, like, honestly, I, like, I'll be honest where you, where I was when I read it. I was literally coming up to the gym because, uh, you know, I just go to the gym a few, back then a few times. And when he sent me that, I went, oh, no. Oh no no no! Oh, I was just in my head. I was just thinking, I've got a big like I've got a huge secret here now. Yeah, yeah you do. <laughs> and I was just when it finally came out uh, about a couple of weeks ago. My honestly, the weight off my shoulders was massive because I was like, thank God, I'm I'm not the only one who knows. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. And it's uh, I've had to keep the secrets of that scene. Um, because I, I, I think the only people I told I was doing that scene to was Connor, 
and Callum because I want I, I had Sal Callum like this is going to be a very big emotional ending uh, in the end of the last volume that uh, I, I know you I, I know you're capable of doing it but I just want to let you know that the, the emotions are really high and yeah it's like yeah this is where you go to meet your man yeah <laughs> yeah it's, he, he was he was uh, skeptical because he was he was he was um, he 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 was afraid he wasn't able to deliver the emotions that we need to to do it, and he more than delivered at the end. Oh God, man, Jesus! I, I was there, like Christ, man. You're tearing, like you're, you're heavy. It was heavy, like Jesus. Yeah, but uh, uh, as well as, as I was saying before, um, I had, I put in Easter eggs that that this would happen in in an unexpected circumstance, like when the nurse says, "Oh, the last thing, Nathan." That that that's. Fiona said was Nathan, and I went about. Oh, that's nice. She gave her baby the name before she passed away. It's like no, the last thing before she had to be knocked out for the surgery was uh, Nathan because Nathan just went to go see her. Yeah, uh, it's it's a weird timeline thing, man. It just yeah. Uh, but um, what was it? The I think definitely the like the the whole thing with the master was excellent as well. I think how you. Like it made me feel like Nathan was someone who, that his whole life was trying to be like just trying to be hit who he wanted to be. But he had these two mentors kind of, you know, back and forth. And for a long time, he felt his teacher was the one who, or lecturer was the one who was giving him the most kind of attention. And then he realized, oh crap, it was the master who didn't give a who didn't give a toss. <laughs> and some people did see it coming, but. <laughs> I tried my best to keep a straight face. Oh, uh, I was like, honestly, I was just like, when he showed up, I was like, like when he showed up in volume two, I was like, okay, he's he's a teacher, but he's he's very he's got a very kind of you know mysterious voice about him. You know, I don't know the tone of it was kind of you know sneaky a bit, and I was like, yeah, I'll let it go. And then around volume, I think it was volume three or volume four, starting, I was like. Okay, all right. This is getting uh, a bit serious here. <laughs> and then, and then, obviously, the cyber, the end of the Cyberman, ep- uh, the Cyberman episode was just, oh, <laughs> yeah. But um, um, no, I, I think like I've listened to a lot of Overton audio stuff, and what Connor's, what Connor has done himself, like starting that whole thing up again from you know, obviously, just from two fan films he'd made. Brilliant, like on it. Like, I think oh, he's, he's just, expanded that massively. Not <laughs> what it's safe to say, he's not expanded massively from those two fan films. Oh, Jesus! I mean, I would say this like, I would say to someone like Connor has effectively made the DW 2012 universe so much wider. <laughs> like, he's oh, god, yeah, god, yes, <laughs> like. I mean, you got. I mean, Jesus! Imagine telling, like, imagine telling, like, Luke from twenty thirteen. Oh yeah. By the way, in this in this age right now, you've got a whole like expanded universe in audio form. You've got two, maybe one or two different doctors showing up from time to time, and you've connected with Nathan Carter's pan films. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because um, I I don't think I say this, but like, uh, there's like some skepticism if Nathan was because for me. I think I can't remember what one it was when we did the whole big relaunch where we had to where we retcon some doctors. I think there was a lot of skepticism if Nathan was in or out. You know what I mean? Oh right, right, right. If Nathan was still in our universe, because and there's a lot more skepticism when he didn't appear in uh, the, the the remaster of the fiftieth. But it was just sort of like when we talked. I think it was like we did talk to him, just saying like. Uh, when he wanted to do series four again, we gave him a lot of supports and he wanted to have Pete appear on the, at the end for the regeneration. So I was like, yeah, okay. He's still very much in this. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, he's still in, he's still in. Uh, I mean, I'll be honest. It, that it, like, I don't know how, like how it was for yourself, but when I saw that, I was like, damn, this guy is like, like I, I'd, I'd only seen a lot of series. I kind of came in around series three. And when I kind of, and, the Fountain of, Fountain of Abydos would kind of be my intro to the whole thing, you know, for a lot for a lot of it. But then from watching him throughout that whole series just get beaten down and, you know, that final one just like with the master and everything, I was yeah. like, damn, this, this is crazy. Yeah, exactly. Yes. I just realized that 
we've had three masters in the universe in one year. Oh my god! <laughs> we've had Luke Lane, we've had uh, Callum Bird, and we've had um, we've had uh, Damien as well as the master. So it was like we have so many masters this 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 year. It's been very masterful, you could say. <laughs> oh god, yes. <laughs> I mean. If I, I mean, if I, like, I mean, I'm off doing my own thing. So, I mean, me, DD, I mean, DDK are done crap. <laughs> I was going to, I was going to, like, maybe me and MB Homeland are, like, the only, like, are, like, we're out, we're out here. <laughs> we're doing our bits. <laughs> uh, but um, I think, to be fair, like, obviously, since Luke did a retcon of the whole, like, well, not just Luke yourself and everyone did a retcon of the, the timeline. I think it was justified because... I know there was a certain individual. I won't say who he is because no. it's, it's been made public knowledge again. Uh, and yeah, I would definitely say it was best to wreck on it. <laughs> a little bit. I, but I, I, let's not get into that because just like, yeah, it's just, it, 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 let's just, it's, I don't want to dig that up. <laughs> oh yeah. There's a lot of, I mean, there's currently a lot of things going on that I, I don't think this podcast is the one to, to go do with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, like, I mean, the only one that you didn't reveal was the whole Lost Doctor. And I think everyone's everyone's literally, I think that's the biggest mystery of the, the, the what is it, DW 2012 right now. Who the oh, heck is this Doctor? Was, well, you, you did say you're going to be in the next episode. Oh, God. <laughs> Am I saying Aiden's the Lost Doctor? Uh... <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I mean, no, just, we can confirm. No, you're not the last doctors. But it's, I'm, thank God, some, all that, all that weight on your plate, <laughs> all that weight off my head. Thank God. <laughs> yeah, but um, for who the lost doctor is, is it's it's gonna be revealed in the finale. Uh, whenever we get around to doing that, but it's, uh, uh, they are cast. They are patiently waiting uh, for their for their appearance. But uh, that's that's all I can say on the matter currently. Ah, and we, I won't, I won't, I'll only ask you: Is there has there any be been any thought into um, who's next after yourself? Uh, I, I'm not <laughs> other, like that's the only thing I'd ask you on that one. Um, who's next? That's the <laughs> <laughs> well with the finale. We're addressing who I was and who I'm going to be in the same finale. <laughs> Oh, so it's all right. So it's like one of those kind of, I'm, <laughs> I'm dealing with myself here, me myself. Yeah, I get to myself. reveal <laughs> who I was in my past and who I'm going to be in my future. I mean, that's that's a good kind of psychological thing when you think about it. You know, I mean, like Doctor. Obviously, we had Russell's take on it with David Tennant, where I'm gonna die. <laughs> I'm gonna some new man's gonna saunter away, and I'm dead. But, yeah. Uh, no, I think we, we, your doctor. I'm looking forward to it because you've had a lot. Like your doctor's had a lot of like just a lot of shit happen to him. Oh god! And I'm and I'm literally just there watching it. Ah, oh, give him a good day. Yeah, <laughs> um, I think fractured timeline is 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 him having a good a good time. Like he's he's going through the regeneration there, but ultimately this is him just having a, trying to have a good time before you know before he goes before he, he regenerates and who that. That that is um, that, uh, I don't know. If, uh, the, the, uh, it's um, it's t- to be revealed who it is. Hey, look, keep. I'll keep you got to keep some secrets, man. It's how it is. <laughs> I've so many secrets right now. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I more uh, secrets what to do with. Ah, <laughs> uh, lad, I'm I'm thankful I'm only doing one series like yourself because I could like honestly I could not keep like with me and secrets. I'm just like. This is gonna kill me. This is gonna kill. Me. <laughs> like uh, I've had the 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 the, ma- the master of secret for so long. Uh, but I, I to be fair, like when it was revealed, it was a good reveal because you know when he ran off in that episode, I was like, okay, something's happening there. <laughs> and then when he came out and did that, I was like, oh damn, oh oh god, okay. And then the way, the way he was so smug about it, I love how. Is his name Damien? Is it? Yeah, Damien. He's great. He, I love the smugness he does with it. Like just how like he eats that scenery. Just like it's like his last meal, and he's just you know going in with it. Like 
Yeah, yeah. Like that bit with um, Nate, and he just like where he completely disregards everything about him. He's like, "Oh, listening to you talk about your feelings, what bore!" <laughs> <laughs> I was laughing inside. <laughs> yeah, and like, well, I like what Damien as well as he did has like chuckle every time he was talking with Nathan. Like he's like, "Oh yeah, that that's just the master laughing like he thinks like just he thinks I'm having a." Uh, I don't know. I'm just thinking. When's the when's the when's the doctor gonna come in and punch him across the face? Uh, let's see. Listen, uh, uh, if we ever make volume, if let's make volume five, just so that can happen. <laughs> oh my god! It's literally just the whole volume is you just the doctor punching the master. <laughs> just be like, yeah. you pull me through so just like, much. <laughs> just, just, just three, ep- just three episodes of thirty minutes of me just punching the master straight in the face. <laughs> Oh my god. The unadulterated rage just being thrown at the master. <laughs> it's like, do you know what I've gone through after all that? <laughs> do you know what it's I've suffered? <laughs> oh oh Jesus, I mean, like um we want to get Damien back at some point. Uh we, we, like this is not me confirming that the master's gonna be a fractured timeline. I know I keep saying like, oh the master wasn't gonna try to pass. I, I I will say it's I I can't I can't lie about it twice. The master will not be in fractured timeline, but I do want to bring Damien back at some point. I mean, I lo- I loved how what you did with like Dracula. Dracula was a nice way to kind of bridge the two, you know, errors of your doctor in some way, even if it wasn't a huge, you know, thing at all. Yeah, like I wanted that Dracula two part where, where Dracula comes at two different points in the doctor's timeline, where at one point he has an adventure with Nathan, at one point he has an adventure with. Uh, Maggie. I mean, with the the power of Maggie, and you're just you're there as the doctor, just like, oh no, not Maggie. Why? I, I I was thinking to myself, of course, somebody's gonna get bitten by a vampire here, like. Yeah. Uh, and I was thinking, if it's the doctor, it's gonna be very like, you know, regeneration energy might be a bit of a, a worry there for Dracula. <laughs> well, he doesn't carry regenerate. Remember? <laughs> right, right. Oh yeah, crap! You're stuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm stuck. <laughs> Fuck it, I'm stuck it like this. <laughs> Nightmare. It's like I, you know what I feel like. You know what I feel like it is. It's like regeneration for your doctor feels like a Windows, a Windows Ten update. Yeah, <laughs> just edging, just ever so edging. Or but, uh, playing a game for the PlayStation Store. Oh my god, I've, my buddy once tried to download um an update for Spider Man PS. I think it was Spider Man PS4 at the time, and he said yeah. it took it took five hours. Yeah, like I um. I recently got the new PlayStation, and I want. I was like, okay, time to time to install Spider Man, new Spider Man Miles Morales. So I was like, okay, no, this this is like the new top of the line PlayStation. This should not take as long as the old one. It took me eight bloody hours. <laughs> oh no! Uh... Like, so sought after. <laughs> oh, <laughs> new packaging. Oh, I feel like you're just there after eight hours. Just like, what if I don't want my life? <laughs> uh, I, I, I think whenever I get a PS5 or by by the point I ever get something to be a PS6 or seven, I'll just be there like, oh, here I'll go watch two movies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, um, in regards to development, what like. It will like with your VF, like your visual effects. Like, I think that's the one thing I've like from me seeing you. Like, for example, your title sequences for Doctor Who, like, I've seen it go from a very small vortex kind of thing, which, <clears throat> excuse me, which you did for like the final end and stuff, and what you did for Luke, um, in series one, and like maybe, maybe, maybe two, but to what you're doing now. Jesus, man, the the development has gone fair. Yeah, I that I thank you very much, and I feel the same. I, um, especially even the last couple of years, I feel like the I look back and like the, some of the VFX done for the spark, and I'm like I could done that but better. <laughs> I think that's just what happens. You just think to yourself, could I have done more? Could I have done a bit more? You, you never stop learning. You really like when it comes to. Uh, your the crafts and everything of it it's just you learn every year yeah sure there's that thing where they say i mean to be fair 
like the, there's this whole thing about ten thousand hours to learn a craft, like to to get be great at something. I think with you, it's definitely you. You've got at least ten. I think I've got ten thousand hours of of this at this stage. Oh Jesus! I don't know, man. <laughs> after like I, I'd say after the three hundred VFX shots, I definitely said ten thousand hours. <laughs> I think I definitely say you have built up the number. <laughs> De- definitely those three hundred VFX shots definitely shone up my my <laughs> at all. Oh yeah, but um, honestly, to where you've got now, it's just it's just incredible, man. Because I don't know, just as a, just as someone who's watched you from kind of I wouldn't say the beginning, but just from those small you know stop motions you used to do, and you know just the title sequences and stuff to now, it's just like this is you know you've really you've really done it. Like you've gone you've gone so so far, and just it's amazing. And I I just I really can't wait to see what you do next with your with any 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 of your projects because it's incre- it's incredible, man. That's all I'll say. Right, thank you very very much. That answer means a lot. And I don't know. Uh, just like it's um, I don't know how embarrassing it is to, to, to just have so acknowledge the feet that the old bigger adventures is like it's it's good to see that um you see the development and it it means a lot. Thank you very much. And I might say like. I've seen like some. I, I've been keeping up with some of your stuff as well, and the progress you've made, even like with the your, your stop motion stuff. It's it's yeah, because I think I can't remember if it was you, but you want. I think a, a while ago you wanted me to voice my own doctor in a bigger adventure from. A- oh, a- yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that was. Oh, that was like to be fair. That was. Oh, I think that was twenty fifteen. That was a. Uh, that was a while back, but it was to be honest. It was a nice when you did it at the time. It was a very very nice thing to do i i just think i'm like yourself with vfx stuff and all that i was like i could have done that so much better now <laughs> looking back it's like it I so well currently i've been i've been watching some of your most recent stuff and it is it is getting you are getting up there and now from what i've seen from what you're making now as well which i won't spoil but it's yeah. it's definitely a step up as well oh, thanks man no i appreciate it because like I, I'll be honest. I wanted to do stuff like you know, obviously, you know, fan film stuff and whatever for ages, you know, or even just film stuff for ages. And the opportunity, like when I, you know, it got to twenty twenty, I just thought to myself, "Feck it, I'll just do it," you know, whatever way I can do it, and just roll with it. And I won't say a lot right now, but Dan has done something for me that I honestly. Like I, I will try my best to repay you back in some way or form, man. Because no worries, no worries at all. Because that was just like what, what, like I won't say for to people, yes, what it is, but it's just it was one of like seeing like me something small that I did, like he took it and just made it like a whole lot better, and I just you know I'm I'm someone now who you know I'm very you know I don't call I don't. You know, I don't come from a lot, and I just I try and do my best with whatever I can. I mean, with like for example, the on my chat YouTube channel with stop motions, I've done the stuff with the Daleks and whatnot. I like playing around with that kind of uh, story and stuff. And I like doing stories. So when yeah. and it was and you know it's been I'll say this like Dan, you are you are always a pleasure to talk to whenever we discuss things and. Chat yeah, about yeah. stuff, and I don't even know how we ended up talking to each other. Like at the start, I think it was just like me liking your book, liking your your Doctor Who stuff. Yeah, yeah, I think it's because like we were both from Ireland, we're both uh, Doctor Who fans. It's a rarity here, really. It really is a rarity to to bump into someone who has the same interests in Doctor Who. Yeah, because I think with me and like with me, I, I like I think seeing you go far and do stuff is it sort of inspires me to do that because. I've, you know, I always think like in Ireland, you know, we've, we've not really, like in terms of Doctor Who, like there's not a lot, like the to all the people in Ireland who are listening to this, I'm very sorry, very sorry, <laughs> but like the Irish don't exactly, you know, take well to Doctor Who. They, they just, they, they take, they love the other sci fi stuff like the Avengers or, you know, Batman and all that stuff. But when it comes to Doctor Who, it's a bit under the radar. So when you no. see it, Doctor Who's never really represented us. Yeah, like we, we. I mean, 
timeless children is another story entirely but well i don't count those i don't count that um that chris general's irish broad church remake in in, in series 12 yeah it's a because i think like with the irish we have a lot that could be done like i think doctor who is missing an opportunity oh yeah there, there, there's the culture there's a the history there's it's it's all it's so rich Ireland and yeah like Doctor Who's missing so much like I mean I throw I'll throw one historical figure out there um W B Yeats for example I mean that's a I mean yeah. poetry and stuff I mean they've dealt with Shakespeare and all that stuff before so it's you know it I so but coming back to the whole fan thing it's you only meet so many fans here and it just it's nice you know meeting you know being able to talk with someone like yourself and it just it's just nice really yes <laughs> that's all they say but it just it makes <laughs> you think i'm not alone on this island there are other fans <laughs> there are definitely yeah, as like guns hopefully it, it'll hopefully the committee here will continue to grow and um so that's me again <laughs> that's okay. uh, but that, that hopefully it'll all continue to grow and uh, it'll get, just get bigger and Hopefully one day we'll get some proper representation on the show, and that's that. That will be that will be the day. <laughs> that will be the day. We all just we all in Ireland just be like, thank God, finally. <laughs> but um, yeah. So look, I mean, it's been it's been nearly two hours of us chatting away to one another on this. Um, I think we'll we'll finish it out here. But I'll ask you one more question, Dan. Um. What know. would you What would you say your goal? What kind of goal goals would you have? It could be anything, anything at all. It could be any kind of goal. Just don't have to be big or small, whatever. It, just a a goal that you want to set for. I don't know. Um, besides finish the series off, I have a personal goal of working in the film industry, working in uh, television, or just I want to make stuff and make that and be able to have that as the way I make a living because it's just that you know I, I love to make you know, films I love to direct I love to make the effects so that, that's anything in my future that's has any of those things as my occupation that's that that will that's where I'm working towards currently that's that's a perfect question man and or a perfect answer I'm sorry but it, that's I honestly, I do think you will be working. So you will be a big part of the industry at some point in the future, man. Because what you've done now, like or what you're doing, is definitely like you're you're showing these people who you are and what you want to do. And you know, I mean, and obviously, you know, that's a really you know big thing uh, for myself as well. I want to walk in the industry like yourself. So hopefully, we both end up there at the end of the line. Hopefully one day, yeah. Yeah, but uh, I know well, you know, and actually, because yeah. um, it's uh, it is tough, but I think we, uh, I think you as well, you you have the potential as well. Oh, thanks, man. It's just look, we just gotta walk through this and do our best. That's all anyone can really do. And you know, on a on another person, us, you know, I like obviously my best to yourself and Anya. You know, you, I know you got you know, whenever. You know, obviously, whenever your um, wedding happens or anything like that, you know, I just hope it goes all well for you. I probably, I don't know whether I'll see. I know I'm seeing you at some point during the summer, but you know, yeah. Well, it's, it's uh, the wedding itself is not. It's not till next year. We're keeping well currently, so. Hey, look, you're up to date with the whole situation going on. <laughs> uh, hopefully, fingers crossed that it, it will. It won't be too, it'll be too much of a, of a hindrance to the wedding next year, but we'll see. We'll all see. Hey, look, it's, it'll be all just take it as it comes, man. It's just what it just what it is, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. So, well, thank, thank you very much for having me on the on the podcast. It actually, it was really good. It was a, it was great to be on the podcast, man. Ah, no problem, man. And sure, look, anytime you want to come back on and chat about stuff, anything like it's just it's you know it's not it's not anything about upcoming stuff, or whatever. It's just it allows you to vent or anything really yeah absolutely, absolutely. i i love i love um, i love just chatting with people to be honest even now <laughs> especially now <laughs> yeah well but, uh hit yeah, me so, up 
for the the finale comes comes out in uh, 2036. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Whenever it does materialize, uh, hit me up then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, I think I'll, I'll just uh, I'll just do the end bit here. Um, no worries. So, so I'll just say thank you very much to Dan, Dan J. Patton. If you want to check him out, you can check out his channel, Fractured Timeline. You can check out his channel of himself, Daniel J. Patton. I'll put a link to it in the description or, or, or I'll leave it actually in both descriptions on Spotify or YouTube and any and his Instagram or for Fractured Timeline's Instagram and please go check it out and watch his stuff. It's amazing. The, the kind of quality content you get on there is fantastic. I would definitely recommend it. Um, if you're a horror fan, go watch Conjoined because that is that is some scary shit. I apologize. Uh, <laughs> and, and if you're a Doctor Who fan, please watch the whole, please watch the first season because, and listen to the audios because, you know, it'll make, especially as an Irish person, it'll make you feel happy you know, that there's an Irish doctor out there. Look, oh, man. <laughs> so I'll just say again, thank you, Dan, and um, hope to speak to you soon. Thank this you. has been the Super Circuit Podcast, and we'll see you later.